Hi, this is Pastor Brian White. I want to welcome you to this next installment of our video Lenten devotions. This week, we're centering on the theme that foolish love breaks the rules. And today we're going to hear the story of Jesus and his encounter with a woman who lived in Samaria. So if you look at modern day Israel, it's divided into the Israeli areas and then what we call the Occupied West Bank or Gaza, which are Palestinian areas. And those divisions were actually there 2,000 years ago. Only you called the, the, the Palestinian areas were Palestine, and then you had Samaria, which is where the Occupied West Bank would be today. If you're going from Galilee to Jerusalem, you had a choice then, and you still have a choice to either go the long roundabout way that goes toward the Mediterranean Sea. Or you can go directly from Galilee to Jerusalem, which would require you to go through today the occupied West Bank or in Jesus' time through Samaria. And the Israelites and the Samaritans did not interact with each other, much like even today, Israelis and Palestinians might not interact a lot with each other. And this story describes an interaction between Jesus as he's traveling through Samaria, and he has an interaction with a woman at the well. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near a plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. And the woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, let he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She called the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And they left the city, and they were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, 
My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more than comes to harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, They asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. In this story, Jesus encounters the Samaritan woman, and there are several barriers that would impede this encounter. Uh, Men and women at this time did not interact with each other publicly, particularly uh, one-on-one, and uh, Jews and Samaritans did not uh, interact Uh, with one another. And yet by breaking that barrier, uh, a woman was brought to faith, and through her, many of her friends and fellow townspeople were also brought to faith in Jesus. And that just reminds us that we should share our faith and not be bound by barriers that might impede us emotionally or socially to to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So I hope that during this Lenten season, we may break the rules in creative ways to share the good news and the love of God to those around us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we do thank you for this story. We thank you for Jesus' compassion and this woman's willingness to interact with him, that her life might be changed. And we pray that you may make us willing witnesses to your good news even to those that may be different from us or may sometimes intimidate us or frighten us. And we pray, O God, that you might open our hearts to share uh, the Holy Spirit with others, that you may be glorified and others may be brought to Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.